Hi ladies, um, <laughs> I'm struggling with my glasses, um, I just hate that they reflect, but otherwise I won't see my notes. Um, I lost my contact lenses, so yeah, I have to add, add a new pair, so uh, a new box, so yeah. Uh, yeah, I promised a live, uh, I said I'll talk, I'll, I'll, I'll do a part two uh, of the series that I started last week. Um, uh, on Tuesday around how we um, show up in the workplace as black women and how, and how that is that gives our power away. So I am I, so this is the second um, this is the second installment. I think I'm gonna have one or two other. Um, there's a nice book that you, I think you should read. I hated it first before when I when I read it for the first time. Nice girls don't get the corner office. I used to hate it because I thought it made women um, it made women feel like they should act like men to be successful. But I've opened my mind to it, and it, it really has um great advice that one should just um think about and decide whether they want to um take it on hi zetu thank you for watching so yeah so i'm gonna go up talk about about five ways that we give our power away so last week i was talking mainly about how we how we we communicate so today i'm going to talk about mainly how we how we act uh, in terms of in the workplace and how that is um, in a way giving our power away. So I spoke a little bit last week about hard work and um, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with working hard but um, there is a way of working. There is a way where working hard is not the best option for you. And especially the higher you go and the more responsibility you have, it's not then about what you do. It's not about um, the, the actual work that you do, but the kind of leadership that you provide. I think I spoke a little bit about that. So... So as black women, because we we have been we have been uh, conditioned again to be good, to follow the rules. You know, we're not raised to be supporters, to be nurturers, to help others achieve their goals. Um, so we struggle with. Um, we're, with playing, you know, we, we struggle with being strategic about things. So you find that you get to a job, it's a new job, you've just been promoted, and you just work and work and work and work and work. But what you don't understand, what most of the time we don't try to understand is to understand what is important to your boss. What is important in that company? So if you have 10 tasks and you force yourself to finish all those tasks and you work so hard, you work weekends, only to find out that actually what is priority in that job, it's the top three, you know? The top three are the priority. But you find that maybe you start with priority number last. And when the when the when your manager when your superior looks at you, they think this person is not um, is not performing, you know. But you're thinking, I'm working so hard. I gave you two reports. I gave you five reports last week already. But they're thinking, this is what is important to me, and this person hasn't given it to me yet. So it's not always about producing, producing, producing. It's about understanding what is important in this job. What is important to my boss? What really scratches in this place? And also when you get to a place, understand the culture, understand what is important, understand how they work, understand the energy of the place. What is important here? Uh, the people who are successful, what do they do? Um, what does my what does my boss care about and how do other people work so um because also if you are working so hard to be 100 percent perfect 
you are going to burn out and then you are going to be sick or you're going to start making mistakes and you're even going to get worse um, than how you started. So understand what is important and focus on that. And then the other things you will do, but they will not be priority. And then also understand what you need to do and what other people can do. And I know sometimes when you come from being a specialist and now you're a manager and you're managing people, you know how you work, you know how you do things and you do them well in a certain way. But you need to learn to delegate because that saves your energy, that gives you time to think, that gives you time to plan, that gives you time to see how you can grow um, that department or what other innovations that you can come up with that would really make you shine other than just ticking the boxes that have already been given to you. So one, understand the energy in that place, understand what is important in that place, understand what is important in that job, and then also understand what innovations you can come up with instead of just looking at the list and just working and ticking and ticking and ticking. Be strategic about it. And then the other issue that we struggle with as black women, which I've kind of tried to te- te- uh, um, touch on it, is perfection. Oh, my word. We just want to be perfect. You just want to do everything and you want to be meticulous about it. Um, it's good to provide a, 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 a work that you can be uh, proud of that is important. But... Um, don't aim for 100% perfection. Aim to do a good job. Because what happens is that when, you, when you're when you so focused on perfection, it makes you afraid of making mistakes. It makes you afraid of studying things. It slows you down. You are scared of delegating because you want to be perfect. Yes, maybe when you are lower in the organization, you can focus on that. But... At work, it really is about getting the job done and getting it effectively and efficiently. It's not always about being perfect. Because the reason the reason it is a problem is that we overwork ourselves, we 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 we, we finish ourselves even and and when we we're not playing the game, we're just about ticking the boxes and, and doing things perfectly. You sh- it shouldn't be that your focus is 100% right. Your focus is what is really important and how can I do it well, efficiently and effectively and save time and also save energy. And if you can do it through others, that's even better. Okay. Being too thin-skinned, being fragile, oh my word. Um, So if someone says something, you already are defensive, you already are a victim or they're out to get me, um, you know, being easily hurt, feeling unsafe around difficult conversations, feeling unsafe around, um, confrontation, you know, like we are at work, we are going to have differences of opinions and other people are just, uh, obnoxious, you know, some, some people are just, Yeah. So those things are going to happen at work. Expect them. Don't be too thin-skinned. Don't be too... It shouldn't be so easy to get to you. And how, and how you make sure that that happens is, is when you work on your, on your traumas, when you work on your wounds, when you work on, on, the, on, on, on your esteem. And I don't want to say it as self-esteem. I don't like that word. But yeah, I guess it's self-esteem because everybody just comes up with self-esteem like a word. But when you work on the 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 beliefs that you have about yourself that says um, that make you feel so fragile, like you can't take criticism, you 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 can't handle someone challenging you, you just crumble. So work on building your center work on on clearing those traumas so that you're not so fragile you can stand your ground and 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 you can handle things that come your way um so don't be afraid of pain don't be afraid of being judged don't be afraid of of so-called difficult things 
it's okay it's part of the game you can do it you can get through it just sit with the emotions and 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 reflect and let it pass you can do it so don't be too too thin-skinned and be a victim people don't want to talk to you because you're going to cry because what happens is that then when they are serious um uh when they're serious positions when they're serious uh um projects that need to be done people can't trust you with them because they know oh so and so will just crumble or so and so will start crying or so and so you know will is just a victim so look at that don't be too fragile and also don't be passive aggressive that's what we do as women you 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 go through that people do things to you and you don't say anything about them but you bottle it up you bottle it up you bottle it up or you act out passively um so you you yeah you just have an attitude because you don't want to talk about what is happening so you passively become aggressive um, so, and then that ends up being, you are labeled as this person with a bad attitude. Don't talk to them, you know, don't give them anything. They'll give you problems. You don't want that person. They have a bad attitude. So don't be passive aggressive, find ways to talk things out and then don't hold grudges. You have to be at work for a long time, sometimes in a, in the same company. So try to let things pass, you know, yes, you need to be kind of vigilant but don't 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 hold now you you're angry for hey, i remember i had an issue with um uh, someone i worked with and my son said uh don't be don't be angry but don't don't have a grudge so my son is 22 and she, he's already working he's like it's not nice at work when the boss is angry and and i thought about it and that's true it's not nice it, it allow things to pass sometimes people have made mistakes and sometimes yes people have a bad attitude talk to it uh, let's solve it let's resolve it um uh, assert your position but don't hold grudges um and then how you interact with men and that's one of the reasons why i didn't like the book because i felt it teaches women to I thought it teaches women to be men and that's really not true. So you, you know we always talk about how as women how we are raised we kind of not ready for the workplace and then sometimes the 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 what is it the the so so the the challenge or the um, temptation and temptation that's the word i'm looking for so the temptation is to try to be like the guy so um and so if they talk loud or if they talk over people now you want to talk over people certain things will not come out good because you're a woman so if you want to assert yourself assert yourself in your personality you don't have to be a man you don't have to now act like so and so Assert yourself within your personality. So you don't have to now act all manly to be able to, to, to achieve success in, your, in the workplace. Do the things that are good for you, like having confidence, not being fragile, uh, speaking up. But don't, don't, be, don't, don't try to act like a man. Don't, you know, now you're wearing, you know, some people even say you shouldn't make, do your nails and don't put on makeup no don't be one of the guys be yourself but um strengthen your center and just be assertive and the assertiveness comes from i am worthy you know um don't treat treating men like father figures and that's what we do you get to a workplace someone even made a point um in one of the discussions in that group that they see how they act with men that they give them the authority somehow so even if you work with older people they are not your parents we are at work we are all equals treat them that if like equals don't don't disrespect them don't go out of your way to treat to to patronize them or anything but they're equals and even if someone is your boss they still you're equal yes uh, according to the job you report to them and you make sure you give them that um respect but everyone is your equal 
So don't treat men like your father figures and 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 so and also that opens up to sexual harassment and not speaking out around bullying because you now treating this man like he's your father. No. Uh, not speaking out. That's the next one. Allowing yourself to be a dormant, allowing people to bully you. So you don't have to be this mean person, but sometimes people just need um, for you to be firm once, clearly firm uh, once, or take a step once. Because people then have an idea of you, that, oh, she's nice or whatever. And then if they step they overstep you just be firm once clearly uh without fear and then you'll see some of these behaviors will go away so people who bully people people bully people they know they can they bully so you find uh have you found that certain behaviors you know they wouldn't happen to a certain person or you find that a certain person is always picked on they those people know that this one we can do we can do that unless you are working in a place where the culture is just bullying it's just talking to people the way they want to then maybe you need to look um at ways that you can leave and that also that then brings me to to the second to the to the um second last point not sorting out your money not having your money issues in place when you are in a lot of debt when you are you know st struggling financially you will struggle to assert yourself because you are afraid because you're afraid if i lose that job um then what am i gonna do so it is important that we sort out our money yes we make mistakes yes sometimes we make very big mistakes i mean we don't come from money many many of us as black people so we we haven't we hadn't learned how to take care of money but you need to sort sort it out and then also b being unable to ask for what you want being unable to to negotiate your salary so your salary is not about what you think they'll be willing to pay you is about understanding what you bring to the table and asking um for compensation for that so it's very linked to um understanding what you bring to the table so that when you have that discussion it's around this is what i bring to the table and this is what i think uh i'm worth and when you have that discussion you know uh, uh, go there with a strategy come up with points to support why you should uh, have that salary, but don't don't just take anything, you know. Don't look because sometimes you think, okay, I need to look for another job. But you go there and you're like, whatever you can give me, don't do that, you know. Um, negotiate. You rather get a no, but but negotiate around your money. So as women, we need to be clear and and very uh, strategic uh, and firm and clear around our money. And don't refuse perks. Don't be like I'm, uh, I'm humble. If they say, uh, once you, if if the person before you that you got the, if you're promoted to a position that someone was holding and they had an office, make sure that you have that office. Don't don't let them keep you in that open plan. But you're now a manager, or you know, don't don't. And if, if so if the position comes with certain packs, make sure you get those those packs. Don't allow um don't act like it doesn't matter. Don't be all humble. It's not okay. You know, ask for what you want and get what you want. Yeah, okay, thanks guys for watching. Please um comment on what you think about the video. Where do you disagree? Where do you think uh you've done the same thing or whatever? I just finished a live with the reimagined workplace group for black women um yeah and we are continuing it's going to finish on the 13th of december and the next opening is in january you can talk to me i also do one-on-one -on -one coaching so if you are interested in that you can talk to me next year i also want to do um events um, and I'm still thinking around how that is going to look like. But if you want to work with me, um, yeah, inbox me and let's talk. All right. Thanks, guys.